what Beijing has called the agreement an extremely irresponsible threat to geopolitical stability. Also on the list of people not particularly pleased, New Zealand. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern says that New Zealand is uninterested in building nuclear-powered submarines. But we have an independent foreign policy. We'll take our own view on foreign policy issues. We'll continue to make a contribution, but our lens is very much peace, stability and a rules-based order. That will always be the case. The biggest loser due to this new Indo-Pacific security partnership may well be France. Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison confirmed that Canberra had scrapped a $66 billion submarine deal with Paris. The French Foreign and Defence Ministers have issued a joint statement on the developments, saying that Australia's decision to revoke the contract went against the spirit of cooperation between the two countries. It comes just over a week before Joe Biden is due to host a first in-person meeting of leaders of the so-called Quad group of countries, Australia, India, Japan and the US, that Washington sees as key to countering China. These developments could also favour India, as it strengthens opposition to China's assertiveness in the region. For more on this, let's go across to Lucy Hoff, who is joining us now live from Brussels. And Lucy, just how angry is France with Australia? Ollie, France has not pulled any punches this morning in making it very clear how angry it is. The French Foreign Minister uh, Jean-Yves Le Drian has been on French radio describing this as a stab in the back, a betrayal and behaviour from the United States that was more akin to the Trump White House, not something that would have been expected from the Biden administration. This was a deal that was signed between Canberra and Australia and France back in 2016, a deal for uh, submarines worth 66 billion US dollars that has been beset with problems, both sides blaming the other for slowness in that program. But the fact that uh, French officials were only consulted about this new deal two weeks ago and then undermined during the announcement yesterday has caused fury and certainly has been perceived in Paris as a betrayal of trust. And that is very much the message, uh, given that joint uh, statement that has been also published today from French defence ministers. And what does this mean for relations, Lucy, between the UK and France? Well, Boris Johnson has addressed this in the British House of Commons today, saying that Britain stood still uh, rock solid uh, in terms of its relations with France, that it stood alongside uh, its uh, closest neighbour when it comes to NATO, its operations in Estonia or in Sahel in Africa. Uh, but whether or not that's uh, the way that France perceives uh, this remains to be seen. I mean, certainly uh, the French uh, have made it clear that they feel betrayed, not just by the United States, but by Westminster uh, as well. Uh, certainly French and UK relations have been at a low point, not least due to COVID-19 travel restrictions, cooperation on areas like Brexit, and certainly uh, this will be yet another flashpoint in relations that are perceived to be at a low ebb. And Lucy, this all comes at a slightly awkward moment for the European Union's Indo-Pacific strategy. That's right. I mean, on the same day that Ursula von der Leyen, the EU Commission president, put forward her major strategy for the EU's priorities, of which uh, the strategy for the Indo-Pacific was set out and will be given in more detail in just a few minutes by uh, the EU's top diplomat, Josep Borrell. 
just a few hours later, we had this uh, announce from, from the US, the UK and Australia. The sense today is that the EU has been completely blindsided by this. Uh, a spokesperson for the EU's foreign policy department said that uh, they had not been consulted on this, that they were seeking more information. So really a sense that the EU feels uh, very much sidelined in this process. Now, in terms of the EU strategy for the Indo-Pacific region, it is due to lay out a strategy to, to boost its influence in that region, cooperating with countries such as Japan and Singapore in terms of supply chains, in terms of trade links, in terms of uh, defence investments. But clearly, uh, in, terms, in contrast with the scale of the operation from AUKUS, uh, the EU's strategy is, is looking pretty awkward today. Okay, thank you, Lucy. That's Weon's Lucy Hoff reporting from Brussels.